We'll get a very merry fitness workout with Aubrey Warwick and more ahead. But we start you off this morning with a tasty topic. 2018's best new restaurants. It's been a good year for dining around town. There are many new restaurants to choose from, like Pie for Breakfast in Oakland that we featured here on PTL when it first opened. It's just one of the hot spots Pittsburgh Magazine dining critic Hal V. Klein named in his list of the best. And Hal is with us this morning with a few of his top picks. You have the hardest job in the world. I think I could use a very fitness <laughs> workout. Right. After all of this, yeah. you kind of sample your way around town. Yeah, you know, I spend the year eating around town, and it's, it's the greatest job you can have really um, but yeah sometimes I'm like oh that workout does sound good now do you find that your palate gets better do you are there any things that you don't like I think so you know it's funny we were talking about before the show about uh, cooking for the holidays and right. I used to be a really picky eater um, so my palate's definitely gotten better over the years but now you know I'll try anything now I think now it's exciting you know adventurous. yeah it's exciting yeah. and when a new place opens especially it's you know it's a really cool opportunity to see how someone is expressing you know their voice well, I, I remember we had this huge surge of restaurants opening a, a few years back. Right. It seems to have slowed down a little bit, but there are still some new restaurants popping up. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's nice. I think it's a little bit less frenetic a pace now of openings, but what is opening now um, are some, there are some really great restaurants that are opening and it's, and it's exciting. And we're seeing both uh, people who have had restaurant groups already open new restaurants at different locations. Right. And we're seeing other people who had worked for other restaurant groups finally, you know, having their own place and, and some great immigrant restaurants as well. So one of your favorite openings this year was Poulet Bleu. Poulet Bleu, yeah. So this is the Richard Deschance restaurant group, um, and they're best known for their downtown spots. So meat and potatoes, butcher in the rye, taco, pork and Wonderful beans. Wonderful places. All great places. So they decided to open up a place in Lawrenceville. Um, this is definitely like their most, their food is great at all the other places, but this one is, it's French cuisine, it's bistro cuisine, and it's, it's beautiful. And it's actually really transportive too. I think the design and the food and the atmosphere and the wine and the cocktails, it really kind of takes you to someplace special. And what are you going to find inside the restaurant? What's the atmosphere like in there? I mean, it's these, these soft blues and, and pewter and zinc. Um, it, it really does really echo kind of like a French country bistro. Um, okay. It's really relaxing. You know, the music is, is really fits the bill. Um, it's a, the John Waybeck, who is, you know, kind of the dean of wine in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. He designed the French wine list there. Um, so there's a, an incredible amount of wine. And then the food, you know, good. it's, you know, I think French onion soup, for example, is something that is on the menu everywhere. And it's almost always gets bungled and it's terrible. Right. And they just make it so perfectly and beautifully there. And it's everything, you know, when you dream of what it's going to be. They do that. And we just saw that picture, and it did look yeah. amazing. I love a good bowl of French onion soup. Something I know you're also very excited about is Driftwood Oven. Yeah, so this is, you know, it's, it's two guys that started um, both at Legume, and we'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and they had a mobile pizza operation for a couple years, and then they decided, again in Lawrenceville, they're actually right down the block from Poulet Bleu. Um, they found a home, and they're making both uh, pie pizzas and Neapol or grandma-style pizzas, tray pizzas. And they're also making sandwiches. Um, they have a mortadella sandwich there that I'm like smitten mm. with, um, and salads. And what I like about this place is one that they're using, you know, very good ingredients for everything. But it's just also it's it's so friendly. It's family friendly. It's group friendly. Um, it's just a really again, it's you know, it's a place that you go, and I think the spirit of the the people that run it really rub off in what in the experience that you're getting there. That's good to hear because yeah. there are a lot of places where it's a, not adults only, but you get that sense like. Probably can't bring my toddler here. Yeah. But a place where, it's, you know, it's family friendly is good to know that that exists. Um, fish nor fowl. Did you want to mention that too? Right. So they're also part of the Richard Deschamps rest. It's right. Good. Good year for them. Um, right. So they also opened up a place uh, in Garfield, and you know, we like to talk about where places used to be in Pittsburgh. So where Salt of the Earth used to be, um, in Garfield, they transformed the space while also keeping homage to what used to be in there. And it's modern American. It's um, it's really great because it's interesting food without being. There's a term. Uh, called chefy that you know is used now and it kind of means like overthought and overdone and this is you know really nice really beautiful food but not super chefy in it and, um, not, and again the cocktails there are are really incredible the management there is incredible um, maggie mesky who is a longtime pittsburgh bar person you know she's the general manager there and it's amazing to see the way she runs the restaurant and the way the staff is trained there um it's incredible it's great i went there um the other night, they closed at 10. I ended up getting there. I don't like doing this, but at like 9.50 with a friend. And they made us feel like it was, we could have been there was at fine. 7 o'clock. That's it was great. amazing. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk for, uh, about pie for breakfast. We actually had them on the show when they were getting ready to yeah. open. Yeah. 
So this is, uh, I think this was the, kind of the most anticipated opening in a lot of ways because it took them a couple years to get through all the building issues and permit issues and everything. Um, so this is Trevitt and Harris, Sarah Hooper who run Legume and Butter Joint and they opened up next door uh, an all day cafe. So you get breakfast and lunch there. Um, and it's more than, it's, so the pie is incredible and but the it's breakfast more than is incredible. Pie. And there's more than pie and breakfast. Um, although I have to say the pancakes are the best pancakes I've ever had. Really? Yeah, I love them. Wow. Um, but it's also, That's you know. Lot. It's, it's really great, and what they're doing is they're able to work with their supply chain from all their restaurants and really integrate everything into it. So you're getting you know, food made from really high quality ingredients at a price that's not significantly more than you would see at a, at a regular diner. I know when they were here, they were talking a lot about not wasting. So right. if there was leftover from one of their other restaurants, they could bring it in and incorporate it into a hash or something yeah, for their breakfast. Yeah, it's It's really smart. So international food, Northeastern Kitchen you wanted to talk about. Yeah, Northeastern Kitchen. So Squirrel Hill is really becoming an incredible place for regionally specific Chinese food in general. And, you know, we have a lot of amazing Sichuan restaurants. We have some great Taiwanese restaurants. And this year, um, it was a family, a husband and wife and their kids missed the cuisine of their homeland. They have a friend um, who was a chef in Flushing, Queens for 17 years. They brought him out here. Look how good that is. And was. it's really amazing. Yeah, it's, a, it's an eggplant dish with peppers and celery and carrots. And it's really, you know, it's home style. It's really warming. It's, so it's in the northeastern part of China, which is basically borders Siberia and North Korea. Um, so the cuisine there is is a little bit different than you might be used to from a lot of Chinese restaurants. Um, so it's really home style. They have these iron pot stews, which, you know, on a cold winter day or winter night are perfect. It sounds good. Yeah. Well, a lot of great places to check out. And we, we couldn't show the magazine because Pittsburgh of the Year is on the cover. We yeah, don't want to reveal yeah, that it's gonna be, That's going to be really exciting. So we're actually, this is cool for this story because we're actually doing a little sneak preview of what's in print. But the print magazine, we're really excited. It's our 50th anniversary this year. Oh, that's great. Um, so the whole year is going to have a lot of really interesting surprises in store. And our cover issue, our cover story for January is going to really, like, it's going to hit hard and really look at something that's really special to Pittsburgh, we think. Well, we can't wait to and see And speaking that. of cur cover stories. I know. I'm so, I, this is such a cool <laughs> thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, so your kitchen was on the home edition. It's so neat. And it's amazing. It's really great. It's, so it's up right now, yeah. It feels weird to be uh, on the cover of a magazine, but it was awesome. It's great. It I mean, a it's really a beautiful cool edition. I know um, we're going to talk about that next week, coming I think. Up in January, so, yeah, in January. About the home edition. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah. on, and we look forward to seeing who's on the cover of the magazine. It's exciting. Thanks for having me. And you can read more about Halby Klein's picks for new best new restaurants for 2018 in the January issue of Pittsburgh Magazine. Again, we can't show you the cover yet because of its annual Pittsburgher of the Year issue, and we don't want to give away any surprises, but we will reveal that here on PTL next month. And pick up a copy of Pittsburgh Magazine's home issue to read more about remodeling projects like My Kitchen and other inspiration for your home online and on newsstands now. And we'll talk more about that later in January.